Today we're going to be looking at the Between Days Whale List exercise, which takes in a linked list of whale pod sightings and prints the sightings which occur between the two given dates. As we can see in the lab spec here, there is some sample output that shows the whales within the date range of the 25th of February 2018 to the 3rd of March 2018. And note that these sightings are on the boundaries, for example on the 25th of February 2018, are printed in this exercise, so boundaries are included. In gedit, I've loaded the starting code for this exercise. Our job is to complete the between days whales function, which takes in two dates as a date struct pointers, and a pointer to a pod struct. If we look at the definition of a date struct, which is at the top of a file, which we are given, we can see that it's a fairly simple struct just containing three ints describing the year, month, and day. The struct pod is a little bit more complicated. The first member within the struct pod is a pointer to another struct pod. This is the defining quality of a linked list. A struct that has a pointer to another instance of itself. It's important to remember that this code doesn't actually create the struct variables but only details the blueprint of these variables if we were to declare them in our function. Also within the struct pod is a pointer to a date struct, which details when the sighting occurred, an int to specify how many whales were sighted, and a string or a char star to store the name of the species. So let's start working on our between days whales function. The first thing we need to do is declare a variable called car to be a pointer to the struct pod, which points to the current node that we're working at within the linked list in our loop. You might think that this is redundant because we could just use the first pod variable instead of copying it to another variable. This is true, but it is nice to have another variable called car that changes from one list item to another instead of changing the first pod variable to successive list items, which would be a little bit confusing and the, var the variable's name would essentially be lying. The next thing we need to do is iterate over the, the linked list. For this, we will use a while loop. The layout we'll use here is used very often to traverse linked lists, so it's probably worth memorizing this code. The last thing I want to do inside the while loop is move our car variable to point to the next pod in the linked list after every iteration. Before this line, we'll do our printing. Our condition is going to be while car is not equal to null, because eventually car stab next is going to be null, signifying the end of the list. And when this happens, we'll print out the last sighting in the list, set car equal to car next, so that car is now null, and then the loop will terminate. Our call to printf inside this while loop will use a fairly complicated formatted string, because as we can see in the assignment spec, we need to print the number of whales as a right aligned integer. Basically we need to tell printf to print this number using at least two characters, and prepending spaces if necessary if it's a one character number. To do this, we insert a 2 between the percent and the d. Similarly, the date numbers are numbers that are always consisting of two characters, with leading zeros if required. So to do this, we insert 0, 2 between the percent and the d. Finally, we have a string for the species name and a new line. So inside the while loop, though, for every iteration, we need to check if the pod was seen between the two dates. So our printf will go inside an if statement. This seems like it's an easy thing to do, but it's actually a fairly complicated thing, because you can't compare struct dates with the greater than or less than operator. To do this, I'm going to call a function that I'll make called isPod between days. This function will take in both the pod struct and the two date structs, and return one for true if the pod was cited between the two dates, or zero for false if it wasn't. Inside this function, we'll need to check first if the pod was before the start or after the end, because in either of those two cases, we'll need to return false. In this case, I'm going to use a function here that I'll create called date before to check if the pod sighting happened before the start date, and I'll use date after to check if the pod sighting happened after the end date. In both cases, if the date is before the beginning or after the end, I'm going to return zero, which is going to be hash defined as false. So I'll make a hash defined for this, because in this situation, zero means false. An else statement here will only execute 
if the dates in, indeed exist within the range. So in that case I'll return 1, which I'll hash define as true. Now we just need to make our date before and date after functions. Let's start with our date before function. The first thing I want to do is declare a variable to hold our return value, so we can avoid having multiple return statements, just like we did in the isPod between days function. This makes our code a little bit easier to understand and debug. If the year of the first date is less than the second, then first definitely occurred before, so we can return 1, which I'll hash define as true. In the opposite case, we should return 0 and hash define that as false because the first date occurred after the second date. If neither of those were the case, the only other situation is if the years are equal. So if the program reaches this stage in the if-else chain, we can know that the years are necessarily equal. So we start to look at the months. If the month of the first is before the month of the second, then we return true, because we already know that the years are equal. If the first month is after the second, we return false. So now, if none of the above conditions involving both years and months are true, then necessarily both the year and the month are equal, so we can start to compare the days. If the first date's day is before the second, we can return true. And if it's after, we can return false. The final else statement will only be executed if the year, month, and day are all equal. That is the only situation where none of the above conditions are true. So this else block is executed, and we will return false, because we want our function to return 0 or false if the dates are the same, in order to ensure that the sightings on the boundary dates are printed. Our final function is date after. We could copy the code from the date before function and change a few things to make this function work, but instead I'm going to simply call date before within date after and reverse the arguments. This structure is ideal because it will reduce the amount of duplicate or similar code within our program. So let's save, compile, and run our program with the autotest command. As you can see, our program passes all of the tests. So let's open up gedit again and review what we did. We were asked to, given a linked list of whale sightings and a date range, print the sightings that occurred within that range. Our between days whales function simply iterates over the linked lists, tests if each pod is within the range, and prints it out if it is. To test if a certain pod was sighted within a date range, we use the pod between days function, which just calls the date before and date after function to see if the sightings was outside the range. If the signing was outside the range, then we return zero or false. If it was inside the range, we return true. Our date before function simply takes in two dates and compares their years, months, and days in that order. If the dates are equal, we return zero or false, so that the sightings on the boundary dates are printed as per the spec. Finally, our date after function was very easy to implement as it was just calling the date before function but reversing the arguments.